I've never been in jail. Okay, you can use your phone. Is your phone in the car? I don't know where my phone is right now. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to grab your shoes. We'll bring them with you. Are you going to uh, give me a DUI? Yeah. You're arrested for DUI, ma'am. On July the 28th of 2021, Kayla Marie Gibson was stopped by law enforcement in Orange County, Florida, after she'd been spotted speeding and driving erratically. Upon being asked by the interviewing officer how much she'd had to drink, Gibson promptly admitted that she'd had two beers, later confessing that she'd also had a shot. The 22-year-old slurred her words, telling the interviewing officer that she'd recently broken up with her boyfriend and that she was off birth control, which had increased her alcohol tolerance. When the officer remarked that it meant she could drink more, Gibson corrected herself and said that her tolerance had actually decreased. She then claimed that she used to be able to drink 18 beers in one sitting. The cop reacted in shock to the reveal, but the young woman seemingly trying to reassure him said, I'm Irish. She performed poorly during the walk and turn as well as during the one leg stand field sobriety tests, claiming that she was nervous upon faltering. When the officer asked her how drunk she was on a scale from 0 to 10, Gibson revealed that she was at a 2.5, motivating the rating by saying because I've only had two beers. The officer then pointed out that she'd also previously admitted to having had a shot as well. As their conversation progressed, Gibson claimed that the beer bottles she'd drunk before getting behind the wheel were double the size of regular bottles. The young woman was arrested for DUI and transported to the station where her mugshot was taken. The photo showed Gibson with red eyes and black makeup streaks on her cheeks. Number 6. Brittany Montenegro New York City woman Brittany Montenegro, aged 20, was arrested by law enforcement in Orlando, Florida, following an altercation that occurred in the early hours of April the 4th of 2015. A fight involving multiple individuals had broken out at a downtown bar before spilling outside at East Pine Street and South Court Avenue. Montenegro was reported to have charged another woman with her fists raised. During the incident, Montenegro was inebriated and still aggressive when the police arrived at the scene. An officer wrote in his account of the incident that he'd conducted an armbar takedown technique by controlling her left elbow and her wrist before restraining the 20-year-old. Montenegro was pictured covered in blood after being taken into custody, but it emerged that the blood wasn't hers as it had splattered onto her during the initial brawl. The young woman, who was charged with disorderly conduct, had emerged relatively unscathed from the incident. She only had a small abrasion on her shoulder, but according to the arresting officer, she couldn't account for it. Number 5. Russian Terminator On August 19th of 2018, a night on the town went drastically wrong for several patrons at the studio private place on Karl Marx Street in Tambov, south of Moscow, Russia. Several club goers were on the dance floor when one of them bumped into a tall muscle-bound reveler. The latter retaliated with a quick punch to the man's head and was pushed away as a result, with the altercation captured on the club's security cameras within seconds. The muscle-bound reveler landed a two-strike combination that floored the other man. He then started throwing haymakers at everyone in his vicinity. He knocked out two men in quick succession, one of whom remained splayed on the floor with blood pouring from his mouth. The rampaging club goer, whom the media likened to a real-life Terminator, then focused his attention on several men standing by a couch, blitzing them with strikes. At one point, the entire club crowd had retreated to one half of the dance floor as the so-called Terminator bundled a man into a couch and pummeled his ribs with devastating strikes. Another male patron tried to intervene and was knocked out so badly that he dropped to the floor with his entire body stiff and his legs angled upwards. By the end of the video, four men were unconscious on the dance floor as the relentless aggressor calmly walked out of frame. Two men in their 20s were hospitalized in the aftermath, one with a fractured skull and the other with a cut lip and a head injury. 
Footage of the assaults for which the Russian Terminator faced up to eight years in prison went viral. The man's identity remained unknown in the immediate aftermath. He was falsely identified online as being former UFC heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos. The professional athlete vehemently denied the allegation, revealing he was with his family in Turks and Caicos at the time of the club brawl. Number 4. Chrissy Childerly On August the 5th of 2023, primary school teacher Chrissy Childerly went on a night out at the Vinyl in Cambridge, England, where she was approached by two men. As Childerly sat at the bar, one of the men started talking to her, while his friend, who was seemingly inebriated, bumped into her and apologized. The teacher would remember that they then became bossy and asked her to keep their seats while they went out for a smoke. The duo disappeared when 31-year-old Childerly's partner, 34-year-old Tom Nell, returned from the restroom. After the couple had arrived home later that night, the woman became violently ill. She collapsed on the living room floor, only waking up to vomit a black liquid before losing consciousness again. The following day, she had little recollection of the previous night. She was shaking, had blurry vision, and drifted in and out of sleep while again throwing up black liquid. Childerly hoped that taking a shower would help her recover as she was preparing to pick up her son from her mother's home. While applying shower gel to her body, she noticed bruising and a needle puncture mark on her left thigh. It was then that she realized that the man who'd bumped into her had injected her most likely with a drug that would render her defenseless. Childerly believed that hadn't her partner returned in timely fashion, the two men who reportedly had Eastern European accents would have taken her with them. The substance with which she'd been spiked remained unclear. The police launched an investigation but couldn't identify the suspects from CCTV footage as Childerly had sat in an area of the club that was out of the camera's view. Number 3. Itzel Espinosa In July of 2021, the family of teenager Itzel Itzel Espinosa reported her missing after she'd failed to return to her home in Phoenix, Arizona, after a night out with friends. In the early hours of July the 3rd, Espinosa got into a physical altercation with 18-year-old Lindsay Aguilar. The cause of the dispute remained unclear, but according to a witness at the scene, Aguilar was beating the life out of Espinosa. Teenager Jesus Padilla, who was known to both the victim and her attacker, was part of a group watching the fight, with some of them recording it on their cell phones. What transpired in the moments that followed was related to law enforcement by multiple testimonies, including that of Padilla and his friend, Denise King. Espinosa eventually broke free from her attacker and locked herself inside a parked car nearby. Aguilar then started banging on the windows, demanding she get out, saying, on my mama's life, I wanna kill you. Aguilar asked Padilla, whom Espinosa reportedly regarded as a close friend, to hand her his pistol, which he did. Padilla would later tell law enforcement that he didn't think Aguilar had it in her to fire the weapon as he'd given her the gun in the past and she'd never discharged it. His assessment of the situation would prove fatally flawed. Aguilar fired multiple shots, striking Espinosa as she cowered in the vehicle's passenger seat. Espinosa died at the scene. Aguilar and Padilla told an unnamed teenager from their group to get rid of Espinosa's body, with Aguilar reportedly saying, set the body on fire for all I care, before the group fled in King's car. Aguilar allegedly warned the others that she would come for their heads if they spoke about the incident to the police. The unnamed teenager followed through on his orders. He stole the grey Lexus with the victim's body inside and subsequently abandoned it in an alley near 35th and Southern Avenues. Local police found the vehicle with Espinosa's body in the passenger seat, exhibiting three gunshot wounds to her right side. Two weeks after the shooting, Padilla was arrested. As of July of 2023, he accepted a plea deal for manslaughter and was sentenced to 13 years in prison. Padilla apologized in court to the victim's family, saying, Itzel never deserved this. She was one of a kind. The teenage suspect was given a two-year sentence for car theft and abandoning and concealing a dead body. Aguilar, however, had yet to have been found by law enforcement. 
and thus avoided facing justice for the murder. Today's topic was requested by John Bekelly 3899 If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Sean O'Callaghan 22-year-old Englishwoman Sean O'Callaghan was captured on CCTV leaving a nightclub in Swindon shortly before 3 a.m. on March the 19th of 2011. She was heading on foot to the home she shared with her boyfriend, which was less than half a mile away. The man texted her roughly half an hour after she'd been picked up by the surveillance cameras. An analysis of her phone would later indicate that she was roughly 12 miles away in the Savernake Forest area when the text was received. The next day, O'Callaghan's boyfriend reported her missing. Law enforcement and hundreds of volunteers searched the forest in the days that followed her disappearance. Investigators deduced that O'Callaghan could have only reached the forest in half an hour if she'd been driven to it. They focused their search for the suspect's vehicle on a green Toyota Avensis with taxi markings, which had been spotted between Swindon and Savernake Forest shortly after O'Callaghan had gone missing. On March the 24th of 2011, the police arrested 47-year-old taxi driver Christopher Halliwell on suspicion of kidnapping as his vehicle matched the description later that same day. The young woman's body was found in a shallow grave in Uffington, Oxfordshire. An April inquest revealed that she hadn't been abused and that her death had likely occurred from head injuries. While in police custody, Halliwell confessed to killing O'Callaghan and to the murder of 20-year-old escort Becky Godden Edwards eight years prior. Like with his most recent victim, Halliwell had abducted her in his taxi after she'd left the nightclub in 2003. Halliwell then killed Gordon Edwards and buried her body in a remote Gloucestershire field. Following his confession, he'd led the authorities to her remains. Detective Superintendent Stephen Fulcher, who'd led the search for O'Callaghan, had obtained both confessions from Halliwell. A judge, however, deemed them inadmissible as the detective had broken procedure. Fulcher had reportedly ordered that the killer be taken to a remote hillside where he spoke to him without his lawyer present. Gooden Edwards' mother defended the detective's actions, saying, had he followed the guidelines, then Becky would never have been found. She would have never have come into the equation. In late May of 2012, Halliwell pleaded not guilty to O'Callaghan's murder, but ultimately changed his plea in the fall of that same year. He was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 25 years served. His trial for the Gordon Edwards murder began in September of 2016. After two hours of deliberations, a jury found him guilty and he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order, meaning he wouldn't be eligible for parole. The authorities and most notably Fulcher, who resigned from Wiltshire Police in 2014 after he was found guilty of gross misconduct, suspected that Halliwell had been responsible for other unsolved murders involving young women, but no further charges followed. Since you're enjoying learning about nights out going wrong, stay tuned because we know you'll love when bartending goes wrong, coming right after number one. Number one, Nicola Furlong. In 2011, Irish business student Nicola Furlong moved to Japan as part of an exchange program with the Takasaki City University of Economics. The 21-year-old was due to return to Ireland in July of 2012. On May the 23rd of that year, she and an unidentified friend, who was also an exchange student, took a train to Tokyo to attend a Nicki Minaj concert. They then remained in the city with a plan to go clubbing all night and then travel home with a morning train. While out in the town, they met 19-year-old musician Richard Hines and 23-year-old dancer James Jamari Blackston, who offered to take them drinking in the Shibuya district and to let them stay for the night at one of their rooms at the Keo Plaza Hotel. The young women, who reportedly had long-term boyfriends in Ireland, declined the room offer but agreed to go out drinking with Heinz and Blackston. After downing their tequila shots, 
The two women became so intoxicated that they couldn't walk properly, and it would later be suspected that their drinks had been spiked. Shortly before 1 a.m., Hines and Blackstone hailed a taxi, placed the women inside, and instructed the driver to take the four of them to the Keo Plaza Hotel. The two men were unaware that there was a security camera mounted on the roof of the vehicle. It captured Blackstone, groping Furlong's unconscious friend, as he and Hines laughed and crudely talked about having relations with the young women in spite of their state at the time. They fist bumped and rejoiced that Furlong and her friend had fallen in their lap. Upon arrival at their hotel, the men asked staff to provide them with wheelchairs for the two unconscious women. Security cameras captured them pushing the wheelchairs inside before they took them to separate rooms on the upper floors. At around 3.20 a.m., the hotel manager went to Heinz's room to investigate a noise complaint. Upon gaining access to the room, the manager noticed that Furlong was unresponsive on the floor. Her lips were white and she wasn't breathing. First responders were called to the scene, after which Furlong and her friend were taken to the Tokyo Medical University Hospital. At 3.55, Furlong was pronounced dead in the emergency room. Her friend woke up in the hospital that morning and, through tears, reported that she'd experienced total memory blackout following the tequila shot that had been given to her by Hines and Blackston. The two men were arrested and initially charged with quasi-forcible indecency for the taxi groping incident. After reviewing Furlong's autopsy report, local police arrested Hines for her murder. On June the 15th of 2012, he admitted to lightly choking her during what he described as consensual intercourse, but denied killing her. During the trial that followed, two perspectives emerged. Heinz's defense argued that Furlong had succumbed to an accidental overdose, portraying her as an addict who'd dressed inappropriately to attract attention and who'd aggressively seduced the defendant. The prosecution fully dismissed that version of events, arguing that Hines had forced himself on the young woman while she was unconscious. In their proposed outcome, the victim had awoken during the abuse and started screaming. To silence her, Hines fatally strangled her either with a towel or his tank top. Testifying for the prosecution, a doctor stated that Furlong had suffered a painful death which occurred over several agonizing minutes. Scratch marks inflicted by the victim on Hines suggested that she'd fought back while in great distress. On March the 19th of 2013, Hines was found guilty of murder and sentenced to five to ten years in prison with labor. A judge also noted that the man had never shown any remorse in relation to Furlong's death and consistently dishonored her in an effort to escape conviction. In a separate trial, Blackstone was found guilty of assaulting Furlong's friend and a Brazilian woman in Kofu a few months prior. Like Furlong's friend, the woman reported that she'd blacked out after he'd given her a tequila shot. Blackstone was sentenced to three years in prison with labor. Updates indicated that both men had resumed their lives and careers. Upon being released from the Japanese penal system and returning to the US in 2016, Blackston appeared as a backup dancer in the video of Chris Brown's single, Wrist. He thanked his social media followers for supporting him during his Japan incarceration, describing it and the preceding incidents as an unfortunate imbroglio. 2023 updates on Hines revealed that he'd begun touring as a pianist. Number 7. Michelle Parker In 2011, a Florida bartender vanished without a trace. In a case that subsequently offered little leads, with some investigators suspecting that either a patron or her ex may have been involved. 33-year-old Michelle Parker worked at The Barn, one of the most popular bars in the city of Stanford, and she'd been involved in a turbulent relationship with a man named Dale Smith. On the day that she went missing, a pre-recorded episode of The People's Court was broadcast featuring a quarrel between her and Smith over a $5,000 engagement ring. The latter alleged that Parker had lost the jury item after throwing it at him during a fight. A judge would eventually rule in Smith's favor and ordered Parker to pay $2,500. The show would offer further glimpses into the history of violence with Parker, describing her former fiancé as malicious and vindictive, particularly when abusing alcohol. 
Smith had been dishonorably discharged from the Marines in 2003 for drug possession and domestic battery. He was also charged with the latter during his relationship with Parker. She had requested a restraining order against him in 2009 citing an incident in which he'd smashed the passenger side window of her SUV, taken the seats out and reportedly shouted at her, your day is coming. The order was however denied. Parker was last seen on November the 17th of 2011 after dropping off her and Smith's twin children at his home. Her cell phone was found underwater near a bridge and her abandoned Hummer was discovered at an apartment complex, but no concrete evidence of what happened to her ever surfaced. In the aftermath of her disappearance, Smith became a prime suspect and was exhaustively investigated but never charged with anything. A new theory emerged in the years that followed which proposed that she'd been abducted by a patron at the bar who'd potentially been stalking her. The timing of Parker's disappearance was also considered peculiar as it coincided with the People's Court airing and whoever had taken her would have likely been aware of her appearance on the show. Number 6. Lindsay Glass on September the 10th of 2017, Texas man Spencer Height, aged 32, carried out a mass shooting at a residence in Plano. Height had met Meredith Lane while they were students at the University of Texas at Dallas and got married in 2011. A few years later, they bought the home together, but eventually, Lane filed for divorce, citing physical abuse stemming from Height's problems with alcohol. In the period that followed their separation, the man was unable to find work, had become isolated, and continued drinking heavily. On the night of the murder spree, 27-year-old Lane was hosting a Dallas Cowboys watching party at the house she and Height had bought together in 2015. Officers were called to the address at around 8 p.m., following reports that multiple shots had been fired. Hyde had gone to the home and gunned down his estranged wife, reported as the primary target, as well as eight others aged 22 to 33. He was ultimately shot dead by the police. Only one woman survived Hyde's rampage after being shot in the jaw. Prior to the horrific onslaught, Hyde had been drinking at a bar called Local Public House. In April of 2019, bartender Lindsay Glass was charged with violating a Texas alcoholic beverage code. It stated that a person would be committing an offense by knowingly selling alcohol to a known alcoholic, a person that's already intoxicated, or to someone who's mentally unstable. 27-year-old Glass had texted another bartender to say that judging by how drunk he was, she believed Hyde had gone to a different bar before arriving at the local. She nonetheless continued serving him. In a separate text, she mentioned to have seen him spinning a big knife on the bar and saying, I have to go do some dirty work. He then went to Lane's house and committed the murders. If found guilty, Glass faced up to a $500 fine, up to a year in jail, or both. Number 5. Delphina Pan In late November of 2021, a woman was fatally stabbed in Florida by a bartender who was reported to have developed an obsession for her. 28-year-old Delphina Pan, originally from Argentina, had finished her shift at the Kansas Bar and Grill restaurant in South Beach. When she arrived at her apartment, she was met outside by Augustin Lucas Mariani, aged 20, who asked if they could go inside and talk. The pair worked together at the restaurant and for months, Mariani had pursued Pan romantically. Other members of restaurant staff reported that the bartender had declared his love for her but was repeatedly turned down. The woman's friends claimed that she'd been gentle in refusing to date Mariani. On the night of the incident, she'd finished work earlier than normal at around 6.30 p.m., while the bartender had agreed to work until close to midnight. At some point, however, he slipped out after taking a large knife from the restaurant's kitchen. He went to Pan's residence uninvited and waited for her. Mariani approached the woman, but she didn't want to go inside the apartment with him. He then started stabbing Pan repeatedly with the kitchen knife without provocation. As recounted by a neighbor in the moments that followed, Mariani ripped his shirt open and turned the knife on himself, inflicting a stab wound to his chest. The police found him covered in blood and lying on top of the victim, in a crime scene so gruesome that responding officers were reportedly given time off to recover by the department. Both the attacker and his victim were taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where Pan was pronounced dead. Mariani was treated for his wound and eventually faced second-degree murder charges. Number 4. Marissa Daniel An American student suffered second-degree burns after a drink exploded in her face during a holiday to Cancun, Mexico in the spring of 2021. Marissa Daniel, aged 26, and her friends were celebrating the last night of their holiday on April the 4th 
at the Las de Guanatas bar in Plaza de Toros. Daniel estimated that the festive atmosphere turned disastrous about 10 minutes after they'd arrived at the establishment. Cell phone footage showed a staff member bringing a drink to their table for one of Daniel's friends, which had been set on a flaming tray for an added effect. The woman's dress then caught fire and Daniel leaned in to pull it out. Simultaneously, a bartender poured more alcohol on the tray, which erupted into a fireball, engulfing Daniel's head. She dropped from her chair with her hair and face covered in flaming alcohol vapor. The student was rushed to the hospital after suffering extensive burns to her face and arm. A friend started a GoFundMe with the aim of covering her medical bills while Daniel stated an intention of taking legal action against Las de Guanatos. Number 3. Ashley Michaels Hodder In 2014, a brawl at a gentleman's club in South Carolina resulted in a bartender sustaining puncture wounds to her head as a result of being struck with a stiletto. Dancer Carolyn Wright, age 22, confronted Ashley Michaels Hodder in the bathroom of Shade Joey, an establishment located in Myrtle Beach. The particularities of their dispute remained unspecified, but it was reported that after 2 a.m., Wright grabbed the 24-year-old bartender by the hair. She kept holding her head down in a position that rendered Michaels Hodder unable to defend herself. When she did manage to lift her head, she was repeatedly hit by Wright with a clear plastic high-heeled shoe. The barrage of strikes left her with a swelling in her left eye and forehead, as well as puncture wounds that required stitches to mend. Michaels Hodder received treatment at a local hospital where she was also interviewed by the police about the attack. In the incident's aftermath, Wright was arrested and charged with a felony count of aggravated assault with her bond set at $5,000. Earlier in the year, the dancer had served two short jail terms for disorderly conduct and assault. Number 2. Carolina Obrica In 2007, a vicious assault on a Chicago bartender resulted in the arrest of a police officer as well as a public examination of the code of silence reported as prevalent among the city's law enforcement. In February of that year, Bartender Carolina Obrica had refused to serve more drinks to 38-year-old off-duty police officer Anthony Abate. The man was reportedly drunk, fighting with other patrons and ordering rounds of drinks for which he couldn't pay. Upon being refused further service, 38-year-old Abate walked behind the bar but was told by Obrica that he had to leave. He then began pummeling the bartender, who was less than half his size. He punched and stomped on her, repeatedly shouting, Nobody tells me what to do! while his friends stood by and watched. Abrika survived the onslaught with injuries to her head, arms, and ribs. Video surveillance from Jesse's short stop in Tavern subsequently went viral and sparked outrage against the city's police force, which had initially tried to quietly charge Abate with a misdemeanor battery charge. He claimed that he didn't remember the attack, but had made over 110 phone calls in the next 24 hours following the beating which were explained as his attempt to get help for his case. He was ultimately charged with aggravated battery in 2009 and sentenced to probation. Three years later, Obrika was awarded $850,000 in damages following a civil suit that primarily focused on the ingrained code of silence that a jury agreed had permeated the attack. Number 1. Cardi B Incident on June the 25th of 2019, Belsalis Marlinis Halmanzar, professionally known as Cardi B, was indicted by a jury on over a dozen charges including two counts of felony assault with intent to cause serious physical injury, stemming from an incident involving two female bartenders. It occurred in August of 2018 at a New York City gentleman's club called Angels. Several media outlets wrote that the rapper had ordered an attack on two sisters named as Jade and Baddy G by encouraging her entourage to assault them. Jade and her twin sister were allegedly pelted with bottles and cheers with Cardi B reported to have thrown at least one of the bottles herself. In a separate incident at the same club, a group associated with the rapper had reportedly assaulted Jade, who was grabbed by the hair, punched and struck with an ashtray. The attack was said to have been based on rumors that the bartender had been involved with Cardi B's husband, fellow rapper Offset of Migos fame. Jade was prominently linked to rapper Takashi69, of whom she sported a large tattoo on her chest. The affair with Offset remained unconfirmed, even though it sparked a sequence of events that ended with Cardi B facing felony charges. The rapper eventually turned herself into the New York Police Department and, according to updates on the matter, pleaded not guilty to all the charges leveled against her. Thanks for watching. Would you rather never go out or 
Receive free VIP treatment whenever you went to a club knowing that there was a 50% chance you'd get into a brawl. Let us know in the comments section below.